Well, Ramadan Karim to Rabha and Dilwar and all my friends at New Horizons in British Islam. But why would you ask a Jew to comment during the holy month of Ramadan? Well, maybe it's a moment to reflect on our deep connections and perhaps our differences. But let's start with the deep connections. And they're not hard to find because even in the Quran, when you look at the passages in Surah Al-Baqarah concerning fasting on Ramadan, you find that fasting is prescribed for Muslims. Kama kutiba ala ala min kablikum. As it was prescribed for those before you meaning Jews, Christians, and others. And even the fast of Ashura, as we discussed once before, occurs on the 10th day of the lunar month of the Islamic calendar, the same in the Jewish calendar on the 10th day of the month, the fast of Yom Kippur. There are many connections, and I could go on and on about those. But, you know, there are differences too. Obviously, our traditions differ, our times for communal prayer differ, our festivals and holy days differ, and so on. And the question is not whether there are differences and connections. The question is, even though there are differences, how should we best live together? And to find the answer, I was so privileged earlier this month to meet two outstanding people who are proposing a terrific answer. And they are two Imams, Sheikh Abdullah bin Baya in the UAE and Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Karim Al Isa in Saudi Arabia. And what they say is that they explain their approach that you should be respectful of others regardless of their religion, regardless of their uh, difference from you. And that you should also be a good citizen in the place that you live and respect the nation state in which, in which you live. You cannot imagine how sweet those words are to a Jew Jewish person like me to hear that coming from a senior imam. I wondered, where do they get all this from? And it turns out that both of them base their statements on the Prophet Muhammad himself, who when he arrived in Yathrib, in Medina, he drew up a document called the Methak al-Medina, the Constitution of Medina, which said things like, and he took all the different tribes and mentioned them, the Jews of this tribe are an ummah with the mu'minun. They're like a community with his followers, with the believers. So what's a community? Well, the way I look at it is, and it wasn't defined in the document, is that there are like one super large community in which there are several distinct tribes. There are Muslims and Christians and Jews. And within each tribe, there are subdivisions. There's now Sunni and Shia and other parts of Islam and Sephardi and Ashkenazi and other parts of Judaism. And we can all take pride and comfort and solidarity in our own subcategories. But at the end of the day, we're all brothers and sisters in the same Ummah. And I was reminded of that very much on an amazing trip I had recently where I was invited by friends to Saudi Arabia to El Medina El Munawara, the enlightened city. And there they invited me to plant a palm tree. What a beautiful act of friendship and generosity. You know, I can't wait when, until they come back to the UK and I can host them in a similar fashion with generosity and fraternity. Let's hope that such signs of friendship will flourish in the year ahead. You know, this year, Ramadan, Passover and Easter all coincide. That's not going to happen again until 2055. So let's make the best of it now and make this the best Ramadan ever. And so wishing you and your families a Ramadan Mubarak, a blessed Ramadan.